Gospels of God the ninth and sixth chapter of the book of Romans. The sixth chapter of the book of Romans. I can remember we were watching this weekend and uh, he's hosting or carrying on the state convention for the state of Tennessee and we're going to be down there Saturday and Sunday uh, and they're one of the only ones that has they on the Saturday we literally should to change that but they, don't, they don't want to do it but you know, they might like to drop down I know Sunday is Easter Sunday and when he was scheduling that he really didn't realize it but he uh, he does a wonderful job taking care of our state conventions. So let's pray that God will give us a good convention down there and, and that the Lord would bless and help us to, and just move in a great and mighty way. I'm going to start reading verse 18. Verse 18. Uh, sixth chapter of the book of Romans. Brother Doug, sixth chapter, verse 18. I'm so thankful for our church. I'm so thankful for Brother Tony back there. Been doing such a good job putting this on the uh, internet. Uh, www.eastworld.webs, W E B S dot com. Is that right? If you'd like, and if you'd like to turn in and tune in and, and, uh, and look at it, it's just, a, or if you've got some love on the different communities and different states, they might look at it. You be sure and call them and tell them that email address. I, I, he gave me a, a copy of one today that he has published or that he takes. And I'm telling you, you can't go over and find anybody any more professional. I looked at the cover of that and I, I tell you, it was just awesome. He's done such a good job. He's done all this on his own. I, I just really appreciate Brother Tommy and Sister Renee and their family. And I really do. I appreciate this church more than you would ever, ever know how much it means to us tonight. How much the Lord means to me. I really want to see us uh, be what God spoke to us the other night. It sure is good to see a man of John come in and bring that beautiful little boy in here tonight. I tell you what, if you ask one of the folks about that boy, they'll talk to him for two hours. Or and they, that, they, that's the grand, grand son. And I tell you, it's awful good to, to see him here tonight. We love the man of John and that boy. Appreciate it. Appreciate it very much. 18 verse, 6 chapters. Is that right there? All right. Being then made free from sin, you became servants, the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded to remember servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity and unto iniquity, even so now yield to remember servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is dead. But being now, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit on the holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now that last verse that I read there, most of the time that that verse is used as a sermon or in a message, the first few words of that is where a lot of preachers, a lot and I and myself, I noticed it was marked in the Bible, that we preach, Brother Derek, on the wages of sin. We focus on that. But to the flip side of that, Jesus, or Paul said it like this, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'd like to preach tonight, the Lord being our helper, uh, on the subject taken from that 19th verse. Moving just a little closer to Jesus. Moving on just a little closer to Jesus. Paul said, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness, unto holiness. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this great day. Father, give me boldness tonight to preach your message that you placed in our hearts. God, help me that I'll never be afraid. Lord, to share the gospel with whosoever we will. Let him come. Father, I thank you for the words that Sister Heather spoke to us tonight. Lord, I thank you that it stirred my heart, and I hope it stirred others' hearts. Lord Jesus, I pray that we would take the words that she has given us, and Lord, we take it out and do just what she said. God, us and direct us. Touch 
all of Michelle's family. Be with them and comfort them tonight. Bless Sister Katie, our blessed friend and aunt. I pray God your blessings upon her life. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Everybody say amen. amen. Moving up just a little closer to Jesus. The Bible teaches us, draw nigh unto God and he'll draw nigh unto you. A lot of times we see people today and instead of wanting to get closer to the Lord and, and try to get over on the side that the Lord wants us to get on, since there are so many today have gone over on the borderline of hell and are trying to see how close that they can walk and not fall off. But Paul was urging us here. He said, Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. He said, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For ye have yielded your members as servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity. He said, now that you've gotten right with God, and now that you've gotten on the right side of the Lord, he said, yield to our members servants of righteousness unto holiness. And when you begin to talk about holiness tonight, you have people that slam on the brakes. And the very first thing they do is, is they say, well, I don't, I don't see things like that. Or I, I don't believe things like this or that. I, it ain't what we believe, it's what thus says the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Paul was stre stressing to us, holiness is not a religion, it's not a denomination, it's a way of life. Isaiah said in the Word of God, he said, I saw a way and I saw a highway. And that highway was called the way of holiness. And no one clean thing tread that I own. Folks, I want to tell you tonight, we live in a, a, a very unholy, ungodly world. Amen. And Jesus specifically proclaimed to us for us to walk holy, amen, in an unholy world. Amen. For us to live godly in an ungodly world. And for us to live righteously in an unrighteous world. I'm telling you tonight, I believe if God has ever spoken to His people, and if God has ever dealt with His people, is to come aside from this world and to draw down unto Him. I believe, Brother Danny, it is in the hour that we're living tonight. And we're not going to get into everything that we can uh, uh, tie into this message tonight, but I'm going to preach what God has laid in my heart. I'm going to preach to you tonight that one number one, I believe the church, amen, has become more willing, amen, than I've ever seen it in all the times that I've served God. And what I mean by that is, and, and, and I'm not just talking about this church, I'm talking about church as a whole. Amen. You look today, we was uh, down in uh, uh, Mississippi the other day, and we stayed there in the days in the Fulton of uh, uh, Mississippi, and I saw this man out there, so we began to talk to these people that morning when we went down for breakfast. I, I, I sat down and was talking to some of them, and I asked that man, I said, what are you doing down here? He said, well, we've come down here to, to take the kids over to the ramp. And I said to the ramp, and he said, yes, uh, that thing that you see on TV and where those kids get up there and jump and they rock and they sway and they do all those things. And now, I'm not criticizing, but I'm just saying what I feel like in my heart. And I asked him, I said, well, what do they do there? He said, well, it's a, it's a worship service. And I thought, as, as, as I was listening to him as he uh, was talking there, I thought, what is it that draws people? And that is it real Jesus? Or is it a fake Jesus? Is it a real gospel? Or is it an imitation gospel? Is it just something? Someone asked me one time, said, can we bring uh, our, our, this kind of thing to your church and, uh, and entertain? I said, no, we don't entertain them. We're not there as entertainers. We're there as men and women of God to worship God. We don't need somebody coming here and entertain them. To entertain means to pacify. And then we need some people that will worship and love God in the beauty of holiness. I read tonight that the church, and that is a holy place, and that the holy people need to come into and worship God. I think it's a place for the dirt.